When, when one is saying, I want to be a yoga teacher, it, it's really fascinating over the years because you have to liter literally look at the motive behind that. I've actually had students call and say, uh, when is your teacher training program? And I said, well, first of all, how long have you been practicing? And they say, you know what, I've, I'm going to take my first intensive this weekend, but I just want to plan ahead. And so they're like jumping to their career, like teaching before they've even done the practice. Even when students have done some practice for a while, they sometimes connect going deeper in their practice with being a teacher because there's this idea out there that the next level of advanced training is teacher training. You see, it's like you hit the fundamental levels of a, of a curriculum and then you, you say, all right, what's next? Well, the the next step to go deeper, the way it's often been presented, is just teacher training. And so they've gone through a teacher training, they think, oh, now I'm supposed to be a teacher, but there's not necessarily where they're living the demand for, you know, that. And in fact, I've heard where uh, there's some statistics and that where the number of yoga teachers in a certain area are almost equal to the number of students which I, I don't understand that, but, but it, it really indicates that, you know, there can be in some areas totally oversaturation. Uh, for instance, in my own case, I had practiced for seven years before I even taught my first class, and I wouldn't even have taught the class unless I was asked very strongly by my teacher to substitute for him while he was out sick. Therefore, it became something that there was a calling to me to be able to do that. And then for literally seven years following that, I only taught part-time. As the demand increased, I increased classes, but I didn't increase classes until I had demand. And then there was so much demand that I actually went full-time. So I didn't do full-time until there had been a natural expansion of the student base. And then I feel that that was really to me, I, I think of it as dharmic. It's like there's a, there's a calling, there's a responsibility, there's a duty that's out there. But today, and you know, fortunately or unfortunately, we're, we're a little confused, I think, in general, where there, a lot of uh, students will turn to become a teacher without any demand. They have no students. They have nobody asking them to teach, but they just don't like their job, as you say, and they think, hey, you know what, I heard that you can be a yoga teacher, and you're gonna be popular and it's really cool and you, you get up in front of people and then you get adulation, you get to travel and what a, you know, you can literally make a living. Well, that's a very, very rare case in, in many regards and it is a totally wonderful, it's an honorable, very highly privileged dharma to, to teach yoga. And yet, not everybody is really maybe even right to teach. I think there, there are certain aspects of aptitude and predilection toward teaching that one has to really look at sincerely in themselves.